Hello everybody, Walters954 here. In this video I'm going to be going over how to use a dependent pick list in flow from start to finish. I have a really short example using these dependent pick lists that I have set up here already for the industry and industry subtype. This comes from an SFDX Discord conversation that I was having with one of the users there who needed some help setting up a pick list screen dependency. And since I already had these pick lists set up from the maintenance exams, it was pretty easy to get this done. We're gonna follow my thought process from start to finish. I haven't really used dependent pick list that much in flows, but let's get started. The overall goal is to create a flow that I'm gonna have on the right panel here to update the industry and the industry subtype. All right, so the first thing you're gonna actually need is to have dependent pick list actually set up. If you're using the standard component, you have to use existing dependent pick lists. There may be other components out there that don't actually need that, but at least for the standard one, as of right now, you need it. I'm going into here to look up the API name because we're going to need it a little bit later. And then let's also open up our flow here. I'm going to create a new flow. This is the old one where I was just doing work on the certification maintenance, which kind of prompted me to already have these ready to go. Let's create a new flow. First thing we're going to need is to put a screen that will hold our pick list. All this account information, and then we'll drag our dependent pick list component onto here. Uh, we'll call this dependent pick list. industry, the API name of the object, the name of the field, the uh, this is the controlling field, and now for the dependent field, which is why I went over here. I don't remember if I copied it. Let's paste that in. And at least for right now, we are done and we're ready to test. I do that in air quotes. Um, but uh, for my thought process, this is how I begin all of my flows. Let's do uh, screen flow update count info. Save that. So right now, really what I'm trying to get at is just to be able to see those dependent values that came out of here. And we see that at least on here, we're showing some values. One other thing that I'm probably gonna do before I start updating the account is to verify the data that's coming over from our pick list and dependent pick list. I'm gonna call this data check screen, why not? And all I'm gonna do is display some uh, information, display text. And what I'm trying to do here is from our dependent pick list, I wanna see what those values are that we select. So initially you may think that we're gonna do this here. It looks like we already got an error that we can't even do that. Can't be used as a resource in the merge field. So out of the gate here, we see that we don't have any selections from our dependent pick list that we created before. Let's do this and we'll do display text underscore test data. Why not? And uh, just to make sure everything is up to snuff, I'll go back and update that. Cool. So we know right out the gate that we aren't actually passing in or we don't know the values that we select. It just doesn't give us an option to do that. Um, so next we're gonna need to set those values to something. Let's go to add a variable. We're gonna call this uh, text controlling. I will just do text industry because that's what it actually is. Not get confused. We don't need to allow for input and we don't need to put defaults. And then we go back into where we're setting the value. This is what we're gonna actually push the values into. So I'm gonna pick industry for that. Uh, we don't need a label. And then for the next one, C 
sub industry. We're going to do this type text done. There we go. So now if we go back to our test screen, we can put in our two new variables that we just created. Text industry and text sub industry. So this is just validating that at least from here to here, the values are not blank. If you're doing this in a auto launching flow, you would really just have to watch the debug screens and it looks like our values are null. So let's figure out why that's happening. Up oh, and here is the culprit that we have. We these pickless values one and two are probably just the default ones. Let's see. Yeah, they look like the default ones. We really need to put these in the outputs. And I think this may be the issue that our friend on the uh, Discord was facing. Let's debug this. Run, select our industry, select the sub one. And there we go, we actually have values that are coming through. So that's perfect. We'll leave this screen in here for now, but let's actually do some updating. Let's create a resource, I was kind of alluding to it, but we'll need something to actually do the updating on. So we'll create a variable, we'll call this the account that we want to update, and we will make it a record, the account object. We're gonna make sure that this is available for input. We have our account record, we need to do an assignment of these new values that we just created. Let's say this is account update. Wish you could spell update right. And we're gonna use specific IDs. It's basically we're passing in a record, so we're gonna use that one to do the updating. So we need to do an assignment. We are going to set our industries for our account in the left to our industries from our flow. Same thing with our account sub industry. It's going to equal the text. Let's type in sub industry here. Cool. And then let's, let's string all of these together. Save debug just so we can see what happens when we go all the way to the end we're actually going to get an error because it doesn't know the account that it should update right so we have these two values here and it's going to say something went wrong and here for our fast update we got an error because we didn't actually push in an account to it so now we need to push in an account value uh, this can't actually be done from this screen but let's go back and activate this and put it on our layout and get this up and running. Okay, so now that flow's ready. I'm gonna edit my page and put my flow on there. There we go. Save, go back. Second screen's there. Okay, so this is the next part that I need to actually figure out is how to default do the selection to put it on the screen. I had a feeling I would have to do that, but I thought it may pass it in automatically. We're gonna actually create another resource here. We're gonna call this variable uh, var, it's probably gonna be text, but for these I like to call them var account ID. Gonna pass in text allow for input no default then from there 
when this starts off and when it's on that default page, I'm gonna actually check this, that, that box that we see here to pass in the record ID. We're gonna pass in the ID, look up the account, and then uh, be done with it from there. So we're going to do a get record, find account from ID, select the account, object, the conditions, we're gonna do IDs. We're gonna use our new bar ID. Where'd it go? Did I not save it? Oh, bar account ID. No need to sort because we're only gonna be selecting one and we're gonna be selecting this value. All we need is the ID. So this is where you would select more fields, but all we need is the ID. Um, if we were doing any other types of manipulation or we needed other values, we would select them here. Okay, let's delete this. This is gonna be the first thing that we're going to do. So we're gonna come in, look for the account based on the ID that we pass in. From there, we're gonna get dropped into the screen where we're gonna select our uh, information. And just for funsies, let's just put in text of the account name so we actually know, you know what we're working with here. Um, default value, this would need to be account name and technically we can make sure that it can be updated just a couple extra steps this is going to equal count name oh, i saw it there somewhere there we go the screen from that text um, and if we're doing that we need to grab it from here so this is where it comes in we're grabbing an extra field man you guys are learning a lot Save that, so it's gonna go through all of these things, perfect. We're not gonna debug here because it's going to, er actually it's not gonna error. Let's, uh, let's show you what the debug looks like. I need to grab an ID and that. Go. So I'll show you what the debug looks like. It's gonna allow us to put in that account ID, run this, there's the name of our account. Here is our um, selections for our pick list, dependent pick list. And then these two values are in here. And if I actually press next, it will update that record. Uh, let, me, let me just do it just for fun. So the fast update completed, all results were updated. If I refresh this, we will see that we have new values in our industry. An industry subtype, we do not have new values. Did I not set them? There we go. We're passing in the ID now that everything is refreshed. Let's save and go back to the page. All right, we can see that our account is get cloudy. Let's put an exclamation point and let's set these values in here. Showing the values that are gonna get updated. And boom, we can see that these were just updated. This uh, got added, added an exclamation point. All right, and to round things out, let's actually conditionally show this based on um, if, if the account is active or not. So we only want to update these things if the account is active. So let's go back to our page. There's gonna be at the right side, a set component visibility. Let's add a filter. Basically what this is, is the filter formula that we're gonna be creating, a really simple one. Um, if it's true, then it's going to show up. If it's false, then it's not gonna show up. And here's the current operators that we have access to. So let's go to active equals yes. Done um, and save that. Going back here. So right now this component is not showing up, but let's say you know we only want to do it on a specific number of accounts that move that we're actively working on. <laughs> active. Um, then we'll save that and we now see our components. So your employees or reps, whoever's interacting with this can have some conditional logic to focus them on this specific flow. All right, so that's how you create a dependent pick list in flows and use the values to update a record. A very simple example, but I threw a lot of extra things in there to kind of get your brain juices flowing. If this video was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. 
Comment down below on other ways that you use flows and dependent pick lists. If you're not already a member of the SFDX Exchange Discord, get in there. It'll definitely uh, be helpful for you. And remember, I believe in you.